Look what I've got going. It's um called Hydroneer. I can tell that this game was not designed to be played on a cheap $200 laptop that I got at Walfart. Where can I set my phone down? Oh, yeah, right here. That way, I have to risk me fingers pinching the edge of the bullshit touchscreen that wraps around the goddamn phone. Now, I like playing this game. I don't view it as emotionally intensely as I view other games. I like playing it. It's nice. And it's uh, it's made in Unreal Engine. Yeah, I can tell it's a passion project. I can tell that the fella uh apparently it's just one guy working on it. I can tell he he's really putting what he can into it. So I've got some ideas because I've been running into problems. Um how do I wanna organize these uh ideas? Okay. Uh one of the problems I've noticed is that the little bits, uh, chunks of metal that you smelt down get lodged uh, just somewhere in the smelting, automatic smelting cauldrons that you just click on, they tip over, pour it out and got it molded and ready to go. They get lodged in the, just below the mouth and they don't smelt down after um well it's either after a certain entity limit is reached causing some sort of stack memory overflow problem <clears throat> that's one possibility and it's highly probable given the cheap hardware i'm using another problem is the game's engine isn't running the, the physics checks properly that's another possibility. Uh, another one is that um, the game's physics engine freaks out. Not sure how else to put it. Um, doesn't run its proper checks. Whatever you, whatever real technical issue is behind it, but it seems to freak out. And it's possible that it freaks out because the uh, the whole system, the end games, mining, uh, hydro pressure fluid system, uh, well, just hydro pressure in the pipeline, pipe pressure system, and all that is um, linked to the particle physics because they're they're going on the belts and it depends on what belt speed they're running at i've noticed that when i run out of proper water pressure or the filter pipes uh go and shoot sparks it, the whole system stops working just because one of the pipes is sparking that's happened to me in on my laptop was it five times now at different stages of the um glowy thingies uh degradation within the pipe pressure increasing segments I haven't memorized what all these things are called yet so, there's a myriad of possibilities. Yeah, I went through three of them. Three possibilities for what's going on. But it all comes down to the physics engine. 
So my guess is the pieces of ore and whatnot spinning while they're on the conveyor belts is contributing to the physics engine spazzing out. Now there's a possible solution for that, but it's not as aesthetically appealing to use, which would be to simply have it as a, a static thing. It doesn't spin, it just a couple of different orientations for variation where it's just statically there moving along the belt instead of rotating. That would greatly reduce the CPU, RAM, and GPU usage of the game overall holistically, greatly reducing what um, a lot of people commonly call lag. Now, what, what I call it is simply it's, it's overusing computational resources. And the, the 3D engine that's being used for most of the game's rendering, even though it's simplistic graphics, there's a balance to be struck between what is it that's willing to be compromised for the sake of performance and keeping everything working properly? As far as the game's engine is concerned, because Unreal Engine really isn't in the top five. I can tell it's a passion project, because went with the cheap, um, was it $50 license for the Unreal Engine uh, dev kit? I mean, I could download the free dev kit of Run Unreal Engine and do shit, but I don't have the time. Well, I do have the time, but I, I don't have the patience and um, pain tolerance because my wrist will start fucking killing me. So the best I can do is say, I see these problems. There's, there's a way to fix them. Here's like one or two different ways. Which one do you want to use? Now, as far as the physics engine is concerned, the smeltable ingot bits, not ingot bits, um, raw material bits, they get lodged into just below the mouth of these uh, auto smelters. I've noticed it tends to only happen when I've got the construction hammer out and whacked them down to lock them into place. Uh, it may be that it's simply locking the single bits in place as they fall within a certain proximity of the smelters. Um, then again, that all goes back to the physics engine and lines of code that instead of being lined up properly are overlapping. I've seen it before. I've seen lines of code overlap before. I've seen it reveal actual dev textures when I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 online with a fellow... We were seeing things we were not meant to see as players of the game. It was strictly things that only developers should be seeing. That's not what's happening here. It's simply that the uh, physical properties... I know it fuck that fancy explanation. It's simply that the little bitty bits are getting stuck as soon as they come within a certain proximity of the smelters after I've pinged them down. Also, because of the physics engine and the way it works, um, when the line stops because of a, a single... I've got 10 water filters in the line. Because a single one starts sparking, the whole system shuts down. I've got water pressure going and everything. I don't... It's all... nitpicky 
bits and bobs to check. Basically, what it boils down to is the fellow making the game is going to have to go through the lines of code from most probable to least probable cause of the problem and then run a patch for it. Play test it, see if it works. Most likely he's running on a, a mid-range uh, PC that's uh, got a tower and desktop version instead of a laptop. Uh, also, most probable that he's not even aware of um, these problems being exacerbated or blown out of proportion, to put it in simplest terms, on laptops. That's a common developer problem, actually. Unless he's using a laptop to design it. In which case, why would you be re using such an extremely robust amount of physics programming if you're running it on a laptop? Doesn't make sense. You would be experiencing these same problems. You would have already patched them, and I wouldn't be saying anything about it. So, I'm guessing mid-range PC build. Not high-end, but mid-range. Probably like a... Probably a Dell, or something similar. Definitely not an Alienware. Last time I price-checked those, 50000 for a decent one. I'm guessing you don't have that much money lying around to throw into having your game run smoothly while you're playtesting it. So that's where I'm going. Huh, Mid-range. Also, that and the last time I checked the pricing of uh, Unreal Development Kit. Mid-range. All the way. Mid-range. Not bashing. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I can tell this is a passion project. That you care about it. So... I'm sitting here letting it run. It just stopped. Hold on a moment. Yeah. Only one. Only one of the... Oh, there's a second. The third, fourth. Usually it's just one of them that sparks and the whole line shuts down. Rare occasion for me to see four of them going out of the ten filters that I've got on it. I've got five of those uh, pressure increasing things going on, on the line before they even get to the filters. I'm having a thought. It's not so much a suggestion, but it, it could be interpreted as such. As opposed to the filter that's sparking, broke down, whatever state it's in, instead of it just stopping the water flow, it just decreases by 1% of pressure, goes to the next one. I've got 10 of them in a line. It really shouldn't stop the whole system just because one of them needs to be fixed. That's that's it. That's all I've uh, that's all I've gone through as far as actually being able to play the game and notice if I had a mid-range to a high-end uh, PC I would be able to record this but then again I'd, I'd need one of those capture cards or the appropriate software these days they want subscription service I don't have the money for that so it's just me pointing the camera phone at things and saying this that and the other Anyway, uh, summarize, physics engine needs some tweaking, 
uh, too much stuff is falling off the conveyor belts when the line stops. Um, <clears throat> too much stuff is getting clogged in the smelters when they're locked down using the construction hammer. I had noticed that. And then I looked at the trees. You're using 3D rendering for the leaves or branches on the trees. It's nice aesthetic. I don't want you sacrificing the aesthetic of the game for the sake of making it run better. So, if you're okay with taking the spinning motion of the bits running along the conveyor and having them statically in place just at different orientations if that'll help the game run smoother give that a try uh, put in an option for people to toggle that between uh, what you want to have set as the default for the aesthetic and the performance increasing option that way, people with higher-end uh, machines can go for what they want, and people running it on a $200 laptop from Walmart, like myself, can go with performance. That's, that's it. I've got nothing else to say at this time, other than thanks for making this game. It's really nice. I enjoy it. I can tell it's a passion project and that you care about it. Everyone else, make of this video whatever the fuck you will.